Hey guys, welcome to downtown tailoring. You know, when you have a pair of pants or a pair of jeans that is a little bit too big on the waist and you want to take it in, you are not looking just that the pants fit and that's it. You wanted the pants to look good on you, right? And in today's video, we are going to tackle all of them. So let's go. Taking waist in jeans and pants in general used to be very straightforward. You open the back, taking at the center seam, taking on the waistband and then close it and that's it. But in the last few years, the fashion have changed a lot. And now it presents the same problem we had when we were young. The pants that fit the waist doesn't fit the hips and vice versa. So we have three beautiful women here, Kate, Anne, and Lily. And um, as you can see, they might be very similar weight. They are very similar height, very similar size, but they have very different shape. While Anne is something like a hourglass, Kate is a little bit more like a straight or banana shape and Lily is kind of more apple or something like that. So before when people use low rise pants or medium rise, it was very easy for the industry to do patterns because as you can see, it's basically same shape. You don't have to do too much shape for the pattern. But now that we have high rise and it's very on fashion and everybody is using them, now we have the problem that the ratio waist hips is very different in everybody. It means that the pants that could fit before Lily and Anne now the pants that fit Lily will be on Anne too big at the waist. And the pants that fit Kate and Anne, maybe Kate has a very big bump at the back. And maybe they use the same size, but still on Kate, the back will be very big. So let's see what we can do. The measurement, you can do it in the same way. Like a, you can pull the pants at the center back and start to pin. And remember when you pin, this point where the waistband and the pants join is the most important. And then you can keep pinning down and see what you can do after. You can as well decide how you want to do the job and pin it the way you want to do it. But it's not strictly necessary. I use the T-pins for the jeans because they are so strong. They are great. And then for the pants, I use the regular pins. So let me show you what I do. This is not a jean. This is a pair of pants, but the problem presents itself in every high pants. Look the way these pants are pinned. So if you see, it's kind of very angular. I will mark the pin first just to have a better idea when the pants is open. I mark the pants outside and I mark the pants inside. For marking the pants inside, you know, you have to pull it very well because you don't want to mark it bigger than it is. But look at that. It's kind of a straight in the waistband and then comes like nothing. It's like a, the hips are super okay, but the waistband is not. And I put a mark until there was on any pin and uh, it's like a kind of at the same height of the darts. So it means that I cannot do anything else more than darts. So I will mark my waistband and this is how I need to take in from the waist, but then from the pants, almost nothing. So what I did was to add darts, an extra set of dart. And then I took everything I needed to take in the waist and this is the result. The pants looks very straight. Sometimes if you take everything at the center, go in point and it doesn't look great. But this one looks fantastic. I think it would have been better if I put the dart at the other side, but that would have required extra set of job and some time, you know, time is money, of course. 
And this is another set of pants. These are very high waisted. And as you can see, the pins are very similar, but the last pin goes a little bit lower. So let me mark the pins to assess better the job I need to do in these pants. As you can see, this is impossible just to take that curve because that will look horrible. So what I'm gonna do, I will do two darts at the sides. I will open the whole back just to close it back again, but it will look like a with a continuous thread, which is important. I'm opening just right enough for the darts. And then I will open the whole back. Not really the whole thing. I stop around one inch and a half or two inches from the crotch. Just enough that you cannot see it when you see the person at the back. But because I am afraid that the whole thread goes down the whole thing and, you know, make my life too difficult. And uh, remember, I've told you before that when you open a flat fill, the best thing to do is to pin it so anything doesn't move. I am measuring how much I need to take. As you can see, it's a lot, two inches and three quarter for nothing in the hips area. You see how it is? I'm checking that all the marks are more or less in the center. And I'm dividing. You see, I am taking a little bit less at the center because I'm leaving for the two darts the rest. That way I'm not doing a sharp angle at the center which will look horrible and very bad. Then the rest you have seen it in other videos. I'm just closing back first the center then I will do the two darts and as you can see the size of the darts is what I have marked and I will do my top stitch and then I will take in, in the waist all the excess of material. In this case, because I didn't have the right color and I really wanted to look well, I rebobbing the chain stitch that I took. You know, sometimes you cannot do it, sometimes you can, and I did it this time. And it wasn't enough for everything, but was enough for the center. And uh, you see here that if you find that it's a little bit too wrinkly, you can iron it and <laughs> it will be more comfortable and easier for you to use. Then you see I'm hammering my material and then I will try to be careful to do my stitches and uh, because I have pieces, when I finish one piece, then I will go to the other and then I will do my whole thing. And this is the pant, this is the result. As you can see, it looks fantastic. There is no dent in the center, like there is not a pronounced angle in the center. It's all very well and very nice. And uh, she will wear these pants and it will be high-waisted all around. These pants is precisely for the same customer. They are Levi's as well, but the situation is different. As you can see, the pockets, when I pin it at the back, the pocket get too close together and they won't look really good. And there is a lot of material at the side. So I decided to do something different here. Let me mark the pants before so I can explain you better what I'm doing. I mark and remove my pins and then I know exactly what I have. So what I'm going to do, I will measure how much I need to take. It's around three inches. And then I will take a little bit at the sides, a little bit in the center with darts. And I won't take anything in the center so the pocket can remain in a good place place so what i'm gonna do as you can see i'm measuring what i need to take in and i am dividing that measurement by two and i will mark the sides and as you can see i'm marking the back of the side and just a little bit of the front because i don't want to lose my rivet you see i'm starting to work i open the waistband and now i open the pants and I will mark and join together these two pieces. 
you know, like uh, as I market. This job is fat is my colleague that is doing that for me because we are a little bit busy these days. And um, he closed it up and look at that. We have to make it open like a one side bigger than the other. And he will do the top stitch and it will look fantastic. Now he took the waistband, as you can see, as much as I pin. And here you go. You see, it looks very nice, the waistband. We put back everything. Look at the sides. It looks like exactly like the original, but the pockets are very well centered and it's all good. So guys, if you find this video useful, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment. Bye.